Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, September 18th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. We've got a great show for you tonight. We have put together some clips that you might have missed during that epic 28-hour Operation Money Bomb broadcast 2015. Just to reiterate, we are having excellent specials on all of our flagship InfoWars Life products. So if you've wanted to try them, now is the time, especially the super male vitality is 30% off. And that is a great deal considering the fact that you can get free shipping as long as you order by the end of the night tonight. Again, that free shipping ends tonight. However, the sales will be going on throughout the weekend. Alex Jones did that just for you to say thank you so much for helping us reach that million dollar goal so we can reach 400 million plus people out there bringing them the info war. Now for the show. We've reached a critical juncture in the globalist program. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. So join us this September 16th and 17th. We're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Donald Trump was just talking about how he wasn't fooled by the Iraq war and Jeb Bush comes back and says, well, let's talk about Hillary Clinton instead. Three months that Abraham Lincoln couldn't have been elected. You know what? As it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> he didn't keep me safe. Hey, Joe, talk, talk about that. Did he, he took our freedom, but we're Did safe. he really just say that? He yeah. said that, Jeff really, said that. Really yeah, that. he kept us safe. I've got As a lot of buddies who are dead, Everybody's missing safe legs, in prison, missing arms, right? Unless you're yeah. beat up by your fellow inmates. his brother created. Yeah. That's complete and total BS. Yeah. 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 And he did keep us safe. I don't know. You feel he so kept so us safe. He kept us safe. No, he didn't. Hey, never forget, Jeb. Never forget. We've had a president who called ISIS the JB squad. They have installed fear story. because of his entire campaign. They call him Jeb, and he earned that. This is a nation that led by <laughs> fear now because of that man. said that. Yeah. <laughs> I earned that. Well, I guess he kept you safe by, you know, you know, taking away all your rights, so you can't really do anything. Hey, man, I got my TSA pat down like three times in the past week, man. I'm doing good. I feel yeah. safe. That's freedom right there. Yeah. Yay, tyranny. <laughs> Look at who's been tested. When there were 100,000 protesters in my capital, I didn't back down. When they issued death threats against me and threats against my family, I didn't back down. When they tried to recall me, you I didn't back down. You set up those evil down. union when guys. If Licks could kill, I, I mean, they had blood coming out of all their When they got me to play I one mean, of the was... Who's from Whoville, I didn't back down. <laughs> yeah. On the podium opposed to the Iraq war, I've made my career as being an opponent of the Iraq war. I was opposed to the Syrian war. I was opposed to arming people who are our enemies. Iran is now stronger because Hussein is gone. Hussein was the great bulwark and counterbalance to uh, the Iranians. So when we complain about the Iranians, you need to remember that the Iraq war made it worse. Originally, Governor Bush was asked, was the Iraq war a mistake? And he said, no, we'd do it again. We have to learn sometimes the interventions have to learn from our mistakes, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't a mistake, and so he's not gonna learn from it. And we double down on our mistakes. Yeah. We have to make the decision now in Syria. Should See, we topple if he was an honest man, Jeb Bush would learn from his mistakes. But since he and his brother are liars, they just continue to lie to us. I understand that Governor Bush's name has been invoked, and then we can go to you, Senator Rubio. Here's the lessons of history. When we, we pull back, voids are created. We left Iraq. We should have had a, a forces agreement to stay there with a small force. And instead of that, we politically and militarily pull back. And now we have the creation of ISIS. 36 days ago in this very library, yeah, I gave a speech. 
with a comprehensive strategy how to take out ISIS. We need an American empire on which the sun never sets. We invade countries and we have to stay there forever. Certainly have to be Otherwise, you know, we can't tell what's going to happen. Make you know? sure that the world knows that we're serious, that we're engaged, that we're not going to pull back, that, that our, that our word matters. And if we do that, we can create a force that will take out ISIS both in Iraq uh, and in Just Syria, quit which funding take them, quit giving them because of what weapons. President Obama's done by pulling Thank back. You. I want to go Senator even deeper, and I want to go even deeper in that direction because I think the belief that somehow by retreating, America makes the world safer has been disproven every single time it's ever been tried. Syria is a perfect yeah. example. The founders were wrong. The in Syria was not Maybe he didn't catch United that from his Cuban Syrian background. He didn't understand wanted, about foreign entanglements. But ago, in America, we had a policy that, policy that worked very well for us we while his ancestors were in Cuba. He's not even qualified under the Constitution to run for president. He doesn't have, uh, he wasn't born of American citizens and he doesn't understand American uh, history either. He doesn't have any appreciation for or understanding of a foreign policy that worked until Woodrow Wilson. The 20th century has been a disaster for America and these people up here are a disaster for America. Except for uh, Rand Paul who's opposed it. Thank Donald you. Trump opposed it, although Donald Trump says, I'm a very militaristic person. Did you notice? Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm a very militaristic person, but I wouldn't go to Iraq. Yeah. And he is a very militaristic person, unfortunately. When the war, uh, when the issue occurred in 2003, I suggested to President Bush uh, that he not go to war. Okay, so I, I just <laughs> want that on the record. And, you know, awkward. a he lot suggested of people it. are very yeah. much against us getting involved right now. <laughs> Uh, with global jihadism, and they, they, they refer back to our invasion of Iraq, and they seem to think that that was what caused it. What caused it was withdrawing from there and uh, creating a vacuum, which allowed this terrible situation to occur. The only vacuum but that exists exists in their lives. Again, the number for the 28-hour InfoWars money bomb is 888-253-3139. You can make a donation there. We have uh, some of the crew that is standing there to talk to you, as well as operators standing by. We have a special up until 10 p.m., 30% off of Super Male Vitality. We also have 20% uh, off of Brain Force Silver Bullet. We have 15% off of Deep Cleanse, Secret 12, our B12 formulation, and Oxy Powder. So we're trying to offer this as a thank you to those of you who have supported us uh, by supporting your health, who have supported this operation. We're trying to take this to the next level, trying to get to satellite uh, broadcast where we can reach 400 million people with $1 million. We hope that you can stand with us with that. Uh, if you are struggling financially, as many of us are, we're trying to offer you some discounts off of products as well. And again, we have a special until 10 p.m., 30% off Super Male Vitality. Free shipping on everything that you buy. Again, that number is 888-253-3139. This is a 28-hour InfoWars Money Bomb. We're here live with Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo. I'm David Knight. Let's get back to the debate. Well, the only reason there's a vacuum over there is because we put the vacuum in the room. You yeah. couldn't have created a vacuum if we didn't place it there. That's yes. what people keep forgetting. They keep saying, oh, we pulled out. That created a vacuum. We we made that vacuum. We created that. We put that there so that could happen. So that's, I hate hearing that whole term. You know, we created a vacuum in Iraq, didn't we, uh, Joe? We also created a vacuum in Libya. And we have a festering situation in Libya because we took down Gaddafi long after he was no longer a threat to anyone. He had not bothered anybody in decades. But we took that down, Benghazi was a part of that, and now that it's become a breeding ground for jihadists and for terrorism. Yeah, Libya used to be a beautiful place. Now it looks like the West Bank, now it looks like Gaza. It's yeah. horrible. Anytime we intervene, we make the situation 10 times worse. We're not Team America World Police. That's what people have to remember. We have to stop getting into people's business. We need to also get people to understand, as we've been trying to point out here at InfoWars for a very long time, and we've seen this today, multiple news reports documenting how the United States created ISIS. Understand that when you hear these people tell you that we have to go to war to fight ISIS. Understand these people started ISIS along with the Democrats. They created ISIS. It's a creation of American foreign policy, just like Al-Qaeda is. We need to stop doing that. We are the source of the problem there, and they are escalating this into a direct confrontation with the Russians, both in Syria and in the Ukraine. These the people are psychopaths. The Obama administration is Dr. Frankenstein. ISIS is the creation Frankenstein. They created the monster, and now they're going, mm -hmm. whoa, I don't know what to do anymore. It's gotten out of control, and that's what's happening right now, that entire analogy right there. Absolutely. Let's go back to the debate.
Business, industry, academia behind a national goal to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely. I said, you can do the same kind of thing. Declare that within five to ten years we will become petroleum independent. The moderate Arab states would have been so concerned about that, they would have turned over Osama bin Laden and anybody else you wanted on a silver platter within two weeks. There are smart ways to do things, and there are muscular ways to do things, and sometimes you have to look at uh, both of those to come up with Jake. the right solution. Jake. Jake, I don't say, I don't let, me, let me make a comment there. We're never going to achieve energy independence here in the United States as a matter of foreign policy because it has been a matter of foreign policy since we went off the gold standard to have a petrodollar. Saudi Arabia is a protected species in the United States. No matter how many people they behead, they behead more people than ISIS. They're brutal, they're intolerant, it's a brutal regime, it's a corrupt regime, but we support them because they support our fiat currency, the petrodollar. That and peak oil has been sold by the CIA since that was a creation of Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon back in the 1970s. So that's a pipe dream to think that we're going to somehow have American energy independence. We need to get independence from the grid, and that's what we were talking about earlier, how they crack down on people who try to get off the grid. Let's go back. I just, Chris Christie's always and talking about 9-11 and I saw the planes and all my <laughs> people, the head turned to the sky and if needed to, I would go to war and that's what Bush did. No, Bush said, I don't care about Osama bin Laden, we need to go to Iraq. They, yeah. they weren't the ones who bombed the, the They didn't even follow their own conspiracy theory. <laughs> right. They came up with a conspiracy theory that was a pile of lies as big as a rubble at 9-11 and they didn't even follow that. They immediately went off on another tangent and the American people let them get away with it. Right. How many times are we going to let them get away with it? They stole the pa all the patriotism everyone was feeling, and they're like, okay, well, the president says this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. By intellect, they cannot. They, they require they, what they need is they need an operating space. That's what Afghanistan was for Al Qaeda. It was a vacuum that they filled, and they created an operating space. Back to the vacuum That's again. It's that giant sucking sound, uh, Joe. <laughs> It is the reason why yeah. ISIS has now grown as well. We allowed them, we allowed it's a vacuum the time to emerge in Syria. tested they play an right out of the playbook. To and today they're not just in Iraq and Syria anymore. They're now in Libya conducting operations in the Sinai. They're now in Afghanistan trying to supplant the Taliban as the most powerful uh, radical jihadist group on the ground there as well. You cannot allow radical jihadists to have an operating safe Thank haven you, anywhere in the world. Okay. Governor Huckabee. Yeah, we're today, helping them grow their opium so they can today, become a, <laughs> such a large power there in the region intelligence analysts have said that what they sent up the ladder was doctored by senior officials so that they could give some happy talk to the situation that we face. I love the idea of a, of a good intellectual capacity to deal with our enemies, but the fact is if you don't have good intelligence that's reliable and it's honest, you're not going to have good intelligence and you cannot make good decisions. The next president is primarily elected not just to know things, but to know what to do with the things that he knows. And the most dangerous person in any room is the person who doesn't know what he doesn't know. Thank you, And Governor. the reason Barack Obama... Known, knows and known unknowns. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't know what he doesn't yeah. know. You're it's a dangerous person. <laughs> person. <laughs> hey, Biggs, on the, uh, on he, he's not going to... He's going to criticize Obama for having false intelligence, but he won't criticize uh, the, the uh, Bush administration for lying to people. Knowing they had false intelligence. Right now, we've been talking about ISIS here and there about this in this discussion. There's a big debate right now about whether or not to send more U.S. troops to fight ISIS in Iraq and Syria. In the first debate earlier, earlier this evening, Senator Lindsey Graham <clears throat> argued that candidates are only serious <laughs> about fighting ISIS if they are willing to send 10,000 U.S. troops to Iraq. Not 10, about stopping and funding them or air dropping them grenades. No, we have to send guys <laughs> to fight against the weapons that we gave. Yeah, Lindsey Graham, let's get serious. <laughs> are enough as long as the rules of engagement are changed. What do you know that Senator Graham doesn't know? No, to be clear, what I said the other day was that we need to lift the political restrictions that are already in play. Barack Obama's administration has put political restrictions on the military personnel already in Iraq. We need to lift those and then we need to listen to our military experts not the political forces in the White House, but See, our military. None of these guys how many more we send in. are in interested in the least way, way of de-escalating. Uh, they're not interested in admitting that we didn't just make a mistake. We actually created this situation deliberately. They won't admit any of that. They will. They will. They won't even dance around it, even when they talk about false intelligence reports. Briefly, with the Obama administration, they won't admit. How they have been dishonest with the American people and continue to be dishonest yeah, with the American people. They can't admit that they've done anything wrong.